Hello everybody, some kind of cyborg here once again bringing you an Elden Ring video. Today I'm going to be showing you two things. Firstly, how to unlock the weapon known as Bloodhound's Fang, and second, where to get the Ash of War ability known as Bloodhound's Step. There will be timestamps throughout the video for ease of navigation. The first part will be how to unlock Bloodhound's Fang, the weapon of the Bloodhound Knight, very reminiscent of the Farron Greatsword from Dark Souls 3. The second part will be how to unlock the Ash of War Bloodhound's Step, a short range teleport dash combo which has insane iframes and in the right hands can trivialize most fights. With that out of the way, let's jump straight into how to unlock the Bloodhound's Fang. You can access the fight against the Bloodhound Knight right from the start of the game. His area is located southeast of the first step, Site of Grace, up on a hill in Limgrave. If you have access to Torrent, it's simple enough to just run straight there completely uncontested. Grab the Site of Grace just north of this area and then head on over. If you do die in the fight, don't worry. There is a respawn area no more than 50 feet from the boss itself. Once you've headed up the hill, go past the Wormy Boys and you're going to come across a stone depression reminiscent of the Crucible Night area. To continue, simply interact with the stone plate at the centre of the depression. You will be teleported to an alternate dimension which provides the arena for the battle. There will be a glowing purple rift torn on the ground. Your approach will be the trigger for the encounter. All in all, it's a relatively simple boss. He doesn't have any insane combos. His damage is manageable, and his teleporting gimmick is very easily avoided. The only remotely worrying tool in the Bloodhound Knight's arsenal is his ability to quickly inflict hemorrhage. A bar will appear showing you how close you are to being bled out, and when the bar reaches maximum, you will suffer huge, instantaneous damage. The Bloodhound Knight's attacks will also inflict bleed buildup through blocks, though you can use the item Stanching Boluses to reduce the buildup. Points in robustness will also serve to reduce your hemorrhaging. With careful management though, the buildup is easily avoided, as not tanking hits for a little while will see it steadily decrease. Most of the Bloodhound Knight's attacks can be parried, allowing for an easy critical hit for massive damage. Very heavy attacks like the Square Off Heavy ability, for example, will also stagger the Bloodhound Knight momentarily. You can also utilise Guard Counter Attacks to steadily inflict damage and lead to a Poise Break, giving your character yet another opportunity to get a meaty critical hit. He has a Short Range Dash Teleport ability, which is easily avoided or parried, as well as a 3 hit combo, a jumping attack and a combo which starts with him dragging his claws towards you along the ground. The Blood Knight is incredibly squishy however, taking huge damage from even my unupgraded broadsword. With the fight said and done, bask in your victory and enjoy your reward, Bloodhound's Fang, a weapon with D strength and C dexterity scaling, requiring 18 strength and 17 dexterity to wield. It sports great coverage with its light and heavy attack options, hits decently hard and causes bleed buildup on enemies. It also has a very fancy stance ability, reminiscent again of the acrobatic knights known as the Farron Legion from Dark Souls 3. Okay, time for part 2, where now I'm going to show you where to unlock the Ash of War ability the Bloodhound Knight uses in the fight, the Bloodhound's Step. It is a short range dash ability, which trivialises most fights and boss encounters at the cost of some FP. There was one boss in particular that with this Ash of War equipped, I did a hitless run completely by accident. That is how good the Bloodhound Step ability is. The PvP implications to me are already terrifying. First things first, I advise doing this during the day. You're going to want to follow the road leading east, away from the gate front camp site of Grace. Cross the bridge, and where the road forks to either the north or south, you're going to want to continue north. Grab the Mistwood outskirts site of Grace en route and continue down the road. Eventually, you're going to reach an area known as the Third Church of Marika. Once there, grab the items you see, and you'll have your very own wondrous flask a customizable, reusable flask which recharges upon a rest. Activate the Site of Grace, and with that done, head past the ruined wall at the end of the church. 
Swing a left and drop off the rocks and then continue up through the bushes. You'll see some ethereal ghostly strands. Follow these along and you'll come across a small altar. Interact with that and you'll find yourself whisked away to another portion of the map entirely. Regrettably, this is where my recording did decide to stop working, so I'm going to be walking you through the exact steps I used to gain the Bloodhound Step Ash of War. It was actually a technique shown to me by a housemate of mine, so thank you, you know who you are. Open the huge doors facing you and activate the Sight of Grace there. Don't worry about the big guy for now, he won't bother you despite his appearances. Head back out the doors and take an immediate left. Continue on down the hill, watching out for the little ninja goblins. Grab the starlight shards and then continue following the edge until you can drop down safely. Once you've done that, continue skirting the right side and then drop down another level. There's a ramp leading down towards a bridge with a tower at the other side. Take note of this ramp as it's very important. It's covered in small traps which will release poison gas when smashed. The damage is very minor, but we're going to be utilising this against the enemy who holds the Ash of War. Head down the ramp and across the bridge. At the base of the tower, there's a Sight of Grace. Rest there and progress the time to nightfall. Without getting up from the Sight of Grace, rotate the camera and look back toward the bridge. There should now be a mounted knight patrolling it. If you can't see him, go and check he's definitely spawned. And if he hasn't, quit the game and then reload, and that should spawn him in. You're going to want to mount Torrent and aggro the knight. Once he's chasing you, kite him back toward the ramp and smash as many of the poison traps as you can. He will soon be afflicted with poison damage and his health will begin ticking down. Keep running away and eventually the knight will lose aggro and then despawn. Once he respawns at the bridge, he should die immediately to the poison. That's how it happened for me. If that doesn't happen immediately for you, he should still be suffering poison damage, in which case it's then just a waiting game. Once he dies, the Ash of War will pop straight into your inventory along with roughly 42,000 souls. And there you have it folks. A bit of an involved process, but ultimately pretty simple as long as you know the cheese. Unfortunately, the Ash of War doesn't seem to slot onto the Bloodfang Sword itself, which I thought was ridiculous, but maybe there's some way to do it down the line. Either way, it's an absolutely incredible Ash of War to slot onto any weapon that supports it, or even a lightweight dagger, which you can then switch to on the fly. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do consider leaving a like. Until the next one, take care and have a good one. Peace.